Good evening. God bless you, friends. Thank you for joining us again for our Tuesday night teaching, pastoral teaching uh, here at Zion Temple. Again, I'm Rosman Randall, uh, your host, uh, your Bible study leader in this particular passages of sessions that we've been going through. Uh, we're dealing with chapter two, representing the Holy Spirit, representing the Holy Spirit. How do we go about representing the Holy Spirit? And for those of you who are interested, you can follow along with us uh, on our website, www.ztministriestn.com. And under the Bible study link, there should be a guide that goes exactly along with what I'm teaching out of um, today. Representing the Holy Spirit. Now, there are some objectives that we would have in mind. Well, first, let us pray. Father, we want to tell you thank you now. God, we thank you for being good to us. We thank you for these means of communication to come and to minister unto your people. It is our prayer now, Lord, that you will look on us and bless us in a mighty way, God, that you would increase and open up our minds and our hearts and give us a greater and a broader understanding. And we shall praise you and magnify you, give you the glory and the honor. Lord, these and other blessings we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Chapter two, representing the Holy Spirit. Now, some of the objectives are after we complete this chapter, we want you to be able to identify the emblems or the symbols of the Holy Spirit, explain what each emblem represents, and then list the titles of the Holy Spirit. Now, our main scripture today comes from 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. And if you have your Bibles, you can go with me to 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. And it says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. The Spirit of God dwells in man. It dwells in man. It dwells with man. And since the Spirit of God dwells in us, we must be careful as to how we handle this temple, how we handle our bodies. We've often heard it said that our body, your body is a temple. And since your body is a temple, amen, be careful how you treat the temple. That's why you shouldn't allow everything to go into the temple. You should not uh, eat everything or drink everything, amen, unhealthy things, things that are not good for your body because your body is the temple of the Lord. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwelleth in you. That's 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. And verse number 17 says this, if any man defile the temple of God, him, him shall God destroy for the temple of God is holy. Which temple are you? Now, are you a holy temple or are you an unholy temple? That's the question to ask yourself. Am I holy or am I not? It's not about whether or not what church I'm in, because really our denomination doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what denomination you're in. It doesn't matter what church you are affiliated with. Your body still is a temple of the Lord. And either you are holy or you're unholy. That means holiness, amen, it goes to everyone. It's for the black, the white, the rich, the poor. It's for the Methodist, the Baptist, the Presbyterian, the Catholic, the Church of God in Christ. It the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost is for everyone. Our introduction, the titles uh, the titles and emblems representing the Holy Spirit provide knowledge of his nature and functions on behalf of the believer. Titles and emblems of the Holy Spirit are the subject of this chapter as we continue this introduction to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Now, what are some titles of the Holy Spirit? One title is the Spirit of God. And we just went over that, the Spirit of God. 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Another title for the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. Romans 8 and 9 says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be, the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Notice now, it does not discriminate. It said, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. 
It doesn't matter about your spiritual uh, title that you may have. You may be a bishop. You may be a supervisor. You may be in a high ecclesiastical position, but if you do not have the spirit of God in you, you are none of his. This is simple. Amen. It's plainly written here. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. What's missing in so many of our churches today is the spirit of God. We are led by man. Uh, we, we, I mean, we are directed by man. We do everything man says. But what about God? What about submitting yourselves to the Holy Ghost? What about submitting yourselves to the spirit of God? We're so busy trying to please man and trying to appease what man wants. But what about what God wants? Can I tell you, ultimately, God has the final say so. Not your mother, not your father, not the bishop, not the superintendent, not those in authority, but God has the final say. So now I'm not fighting anyone in authority, amen, because God put those ecclesiastical orders there for a reason, and they are there for the growth and the development of the church. But anytime someone in ecclesiastical authority steps outside of the will of God and steps outside of the word of God and they no longer possess the spirit of God, the scripture simply says he is none of his. And I don't know about you today, but I want to be considered one of the Lord. Now, thirdly, it's known as the eternal spirit. This means the Holy Spirit is everlasting with no beginning and no ending. We talked about a circle the other week with no beginning and no ending. Hebrews 9 and 14, how much more should the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. That's Hebrews 9 and 14. To serve the living God. How much more should the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. My friends, I want to let you know on today, bless God, amen, that we all are going to have to be saved and washed in the blood of the Lamb. As we come now up on Resurrection Sunday, Resurrection Sunday has just passed. Amen. We're preparing to come up on it. Amen. It's just passed. And as Resurrection Sunday has passed and we celebrated a resurrected Savior, we says we celebrated a resurrected King. Amen. King Jesus lives forever. Yes. Thank God that he died and he shed his blood for us. Without the shedding of the blood, the scripture declares that there could be no remission for our sins. Therefore, we need to know, praise God, that in order, amen, for us to be saved, we're going to have to come through the blood. What can wash away my sins? I keep going back to that. I keep hearing it in my spirit. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Now, the Holy Ghost is also known as the spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit is the source of truth which inspired God's word, the Bible. He reveals his truth to mankind. John, six, St. John 16 and verse 13 how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. But he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He will show you things to come. The Holy Ghost will not allow things to slip up on us. He will show you things to come. He's a revealer of secrets. Amen. He's a revealer of secrets. He will show you things to come. When you understand, my God, that there are there are so many other things left to come. Amen. In this world, in this life, the things that we're going through now. And you need to understand that the Holy Spirit is going to show us the things to come. However, the only way he can show us the things to come, we must have the Holy Spirit. We must have the Holy Ghost in us. And we read earlier, know ye not that your body is a temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. And then it went 
on further to say, if any man defile the temple, him shall God destroy. In other words, bless God, we are going to have to have a clean life. Our lives must be clean. Our speech must be clean. Our walk must be clean. Our talk must be clean. The life that we live must be clean. We must be holy. But when we understand what holiness is, amen, to live a separated life free from sin. Amen. And we cannot afford to allow sin to enter into our lives. The scripture said, what? Know ye not? Amen. Praise God. Know ye not? We're no longer servants of sins. The Bible says sin should not have dominion over you. Yes. Not only is the Holy Spirit known as the spirit of truth, but he's also known as the spirit of grace. Hebrews 10 and 29 of how much sore punishment suppose ye Shall he be thought worthy who have trodden under the foot of the Son of God and have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified and hung a holy thing and have done despite unto the spirit of grace? The spirit of grace. He's given us grace. Look what the Bible says in Titus. Amen. Titus chapter 2. Oh, I want to go there right quick. Titus chapter 2. And I believe verse number 11. Amen. Put my hands on that for you. Praise God. And I believe Titus 2 and 11. It says this. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness, teaching us that denying ungodliness is not something that you learn overnight. It's not something that just comes to you, but it teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. And it teaches us how we should live. We should live soberly. We should live righteously and godly in this present world, not the world to come, not the world that has been but right now, right down here, we should live soberly, not as drunk men, not as men who are intoxicated. You know, they say, amen, if you want to hear the truth, amen, a drunk man to tell you the truth because he had to first get up the nerve and the gall to tell you. And so because he's been drinking, he's got his edge on and he can tell you really what's on his mind. Oh my God, but as we live holy, as we live right, the scripture said, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, right down here at this time. And then it says this in verse 13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God in our Savior, Jesus Christ, the spirit of grace. So we have grace now that's on our lives. The scripture says in the book of Ephesians, for by grace, Ephesians 2 and 11, for by grace, Ephesians 2 and 11, for by grace are ye saved, is not of works, lest any man should boast. So then the grace of God, it is the grace of God that has appeared unto me. It's the grace of God that brings me into his favor. What is grace? The unmerited favor of God. I don't deserve it, but yet God has grace on me. I did not deserve it, but yet God showed love and mercy toward me. That's what grace is. That's why the writer could write the song, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved the rich like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. We need the grace of God in our lives. Can I tell you, God would give you grace in the hardest places. He will give you grace in the midnight hour. He will give you grace even as we go through social distancing, even as we go through uh, isolation, even as we go through not being able really to be around a lot of friends and comrades. God gives us grace. He's given us grace, amen, to go through what we're going through. Oh, bless God, I can go through what I'm going through with grace. I can deal with, with what I'm dealing with with grace, amen. I can stand what I have to stand by the grace of God. For by the grace of God, I am what I am. I did not make myself, but it was God's grace. When you begin to look at people, amen, and sometimes people think that they're built up on this and built up on that, but it's only by the grace and the mercies of God. Oh my God, the scripture says this. 
Amen. That, 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 that his grace, amen, his mercies are renewed every morning. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Thank God he gave me grace when I woke up this morning. When I, when I got on the highway, he gave me grace. When I started on my way, he gave me grace. Not only did he give me grace, he gave you grace as well. He gives us grace in every situation. When we understand, bless God, that we have grace in every situation. Situation. When we understand that God gives us grace in the hardest place, he's given us grace even during this COVID-19. He's given us grace. He's giving you grace right now. It's only by the grace of God that we've not lost our minds. It's only by the grace of God that we've not gone crazy. It's only by the grace of God when they gave you the pink slip on your job and laid you off that you didn't go crazy because you knew everything, all of the obligations that you had to meet. You know everything that you got to pay. And it was already difficult making ends meet. But can I tell you, God's grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. His grace is sufficient to see you through. Even when you don't know, amen, what to do, his grace will see you through. His grace will give you, amen, the wisdom to know who to talk to, the right questions to know to ask, amen, to lead you where you need to go. For where he leads me, oh, bless his name, I will follow. What he commands of me, I will obey. By the grace of God, I am what I am. His grace has brought me this far. So then the Holy Spirit is known as the spirit of grace. Not only that, but it's known as the spirit of life. In Romans 8 and 2, it says this, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I have a new life now. I've got a new walk. I have a new talk. I've got a new outlook on life. Things are different now about me. Why? Because the grace of the Lord is on my life. Now that grace, since grace found me, what a wonderful change. Whoo, thank you, Jesus. What a wonderful change in my life since grace has found me. I didn't deserve it, but thank God for grace. Amen. I should have been gone, but thank God for grace. Thank God for grace. Thank God for grace. Thank God for grace and mercy. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. It says it has made me free from the law of sin and death. Then the spirit of glory is referred to as the spirit of glory. Ah, if ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. Happy are ye for the spirit of the glory of God rested upon you. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, that's First Peter 4 and 14. Yes, sometimes we are reproached for being busy bodies. That's in somebody else's business. Sometimes we are reproached, amen, for doing things we ain't got no business doing. Oh, but friend of mine, if you are reproached, amen, for being a Christian, for being a believer, the Bible says, happy are ye for the spirit of the glory of God and of the, and of God resteth upon you. When I am reproached, not as a murderer, not as a liar, not as an evildoer, not as a busybody in other men's matter, but I am now reproached by the Spirit of God. I'm now reproached, amen, because the Spirit of glory rests upon me. Oh, I thank God. I thank God that the Spirit of glory rested upon us. As believers, we cannot become discouraged in this hour. As believers, we cannot become discouraged at this time. As believers, we cannot allow the enemy to step in and discourage us. Amen. Lift up your heads, all ye gates, and the King of glory shall come in. Not only that, praise God. But the Holy Spirit is referred to as the spirit of wisdom and revelation. The Holy Spirit gives wisdom to the believers and reveals knowledge of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1 and 17 says this, that the, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him that the Spirit of God of our Lord Jesus Christ and Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Yes, God reveals things. He will reveal them unto you. He is a revealer of secrets. Amen. He knows how to reveal everything. He is a revealer 
of secrets. Even with this COVID-19, God's going to reveal. He's going to reveal. Amen. He is a revealer of secrets. He is a revealer. He's going to show us what's what. He's a revealer of secrets. You cannot hide from God. The scripture says in the book of Psalm, whether shall I flee from your presence? How can I escape your spirit? If I take the wings of the morning wind, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, thou art there. If I ascend to the highest heavens, thou out there. Wherever I go, God, you're still there because you're omnipresent. Oh my God, he is, he is, amen, in the spirit of wisdom and revelation, and he will give you what's going to happen. And then, friend, we come to the comforter, the comforter. The Holy Spirit comforts believers in times of trouble, sorrow, and loneliness. It comforts us in the time of trouble, sorrow, and loneliness. John 14 and 16 says this, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father was seeing in my name. That's John 14 and 26. But the comforter, who is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father was seeing in my name. Jesus said these words, I'm going to give you another comforter. Up until now, I've been keeping you. Up until now, I've comforted you. I've kept you. I've allowed things not to happen to you, but I've got to leave you. But he said these words, I will not leave you comfortless. Many of, my, many of you, my brothers and sisters, you're comfortless. Can't sleep at night. Worried about tomorrow. Worried about what's going to happen. You need the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost gives us comfort in knowing. It gives us the assurance in knowing that he makes all things well. That's why the songwriter said, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation. I've been purchased by God, born of his spirit, and I've been washed in his blood. Thank God, thank God for the comfort of the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the comforter giving us peace in our time of trouble. I want to thank God for you tonight for just sharing your time with us. Amen. And allow me to come into your homes, your uh, car, radio, wherever you are listening to me. I want to thank you just for sharing with us. Thank you for listening to us. And we look forward to sharing with you from the word of the Lord next week, same place, same time. Let us close out with the word of prayer. And Father, we want to tell you thank you now. Dear Lord, we thank you because you have been good to us. You're better to us than we've been to ourselves. Father, it is our prayer now that you look upon everyone, everyone that's listening, everyone that's looking at us. God, that you look upon them and bless them in the mighty name of Jesus. Give them strength, help, hope, and peace. Deliver now from the hand of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Give comfort at this hour. Let the Holy Spirit be our comforter. Let the Holy Spirit be our rest and our assurance upon today. It's all in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank God. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to sharing with you on the next time. Until then, be blessed is my prayer for you. God bless you. Thank you for watching Zion Temple Ministries. Be sure to tune in to worship with us via Facebook Live and YouTube each Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. on Facebook Live Stream and every Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. for our Tuesday night teaching Bible study. You can also check out our worship opportunities by visiting our website at www.ztministriestn.com. If you would like to make contributions to the ministry, you can donate via Cash App or by searching Zion Temple Church of God in Christ via Givelify. Thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you soon.